Yes, dear people, this is Michael Shemaya representing our Eel Lion Voice, saying it is time for the lions and the lionesses to tell their own story. King David killed Goliath with a stone, we original dread. Amina, the time has come for the lioness to tell our own story. No surrender, no retreat, we a judge a soldier. Rougher than the streets, tougher than a boulder. Bigging up Lamb's voice. Now I'm put it. I jolly for say that. The business aspect was always on the back of our minds, really and truly, because we were all from a, a learned perspective. Yes. Now, that is not something that you could say for all rest of our community, um, especially back in the past. But most of the youths within this community of this time were very learned and they were very yes. intelligent. And you understand? So understood. And then me, you know, I played a very... Um, I would say a very integral role in the first part because I tried to learn a lot about publishing and copyright okay. and all that stuff. So when everybody started to make the music and it started to be recognized and go out, that's when I, I basically started to sign up people like Chronix to BMI, basically everyone. I, re I signed up everyone in the movement, made sure they had proper you know, representation of their copyright and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Give so time, this, time. The, even though I said that we were free flowing, we still, because of our our level of literacy, were able to have a handle on on that side. And then and, yes. and then also, we saw that there was a massive corruption within the music industry, which is why we even did it the way we did it together in our little studio and thing. And and that forced us again to use people around us to become the people that would represent our music, like. The year is 1892, and the land of Ethiopia has been experiencing four years of terrible famine and drought. They call it the Kiku Ken, or the evil days. At least one third of the human population and 90% of the cattle have died. The hyenas have feasted on so many carcasses that they have become overweight and barely able to move. Just when the people could take no more of the evil days, a woman named Wasiro Yashimebe is giving birth in a place called Ergersa Gora. This is her ninth attempt to bring forth new life. Her previous eight attempts only resulted in death. Will this child live? Thankfully, a healthy baby boy is born. His first cries are drowned by thunder and lightning flashes across the night sky. The heavens open up and torrential rain starts to fall. Ethiopia's drought is over. And the baby boy is given the name Tafari, meaning one to be feared or respected. Lich Tafari's father, Ross McCunnan, is a very important man in 1892 Ethiopia. Although he is overjoyed at the birth of his newborn son, he cannot spend much time with him. Ross McCunnan is the governor of Harar and must get back to the famous walled city to deal with its affairs. Furthermore, he is the foreign minister of Ethiopia, and having traveled to different places in Europe, he is very aware of the material and military advances they have made and the looming threats they pose to his country. Ross McCunnan knows that the majority of Ethiopians have no idea what is coming and that he has to work that much harder to secure the realm. Lich Tafari would grow up to become the legendary emperor, Haile Selassie I. To understand his journey, we must first understand the Ethiopia that he was inheriting and what it was like when he was born in 1892. Get your copy of Kwesi Bansu's book, Haile Selassie I, Ethiopia, Volume 1, The Rise of the Priestly Warrior Kings, and increase your knowledge about the history, politics, and culture of Ethiopia in 1892 and how it connects to the rest of African and world history at the time. Haile Selassie I, Ethiopia, Volume 1 is available for purchase at www.bookmanexpress.pub. Please visit for more information. Um, I'm going to ask something. I'm going to put on my uh, creative attorney hat now. Um, <laughs> when this Jehovah evil um, was happening, was there any kind of talk about business between the Bridgen and Sistrin, or was it just free-flowing? Yeah, man, a free, a straight free flow, man. We had no, 
no business thing was happening. We we went to shows together. We just performed. Them time they even because Donisha was so close to us, we ended up doing a lot of stuff for her, like some small acoustic gigs on a on a Marley Museum. And I think one time I remember one memorable trip where we all went to Margaret's Harbor to perform at an acoustic thing. Me and Chronics performed, and you know the whole we did there, Kelly and the whole crew and. You know, as we said, just just it just, just beautiful energy. It had nothing to do with money. It had nothing to do with no business. We were we were young. You know, what I mean, we were, everybody was very young. You know, what I, mean? I was I was like me and John and I them are basically the oldest of the group because Chronic them was like eighteen and stuff like that. We were in twenty six and twenty four. You understand? Yes. So we were all very young. So that we were just enjoying life and 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 being fearless and and feeling invincible. You know what I mean? Um, because I, I have a thesis that I, 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 I work with, um, that Jamaica has always produced these waves of Rastafari. Because if we look at, you know, we talk about um, Bob Marley, but it was really Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Bonnie Wheeler, exactly. um, Jacob Miller. Cool. You know, there was, there was a whole wave Burning of youth. Spear. Uh, yeah, and, they were, and they were youths at the time. We look at them now as, as elders, but if we look at it from where we're there right now, they were youths. You know, youth. Oh, yeah. Because Bob yeah. Marley, I as a youth, to I now as a forty yeah, yeah. man. You know what I mean? So, and then yeah, we yeah. look at. So that was a wave, and that yeah, wave man. we didn't take care of the business. Although we have to big up um Bob Marley, who had the vision and really set his own personal, you know, at least a framework. He never do it fully, you know, because there were gaps and and things that happened, but. You know, he set a framework in terms of tough gang, the pressing plan. You know, he had yes, a vision. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, um, so that but was to put into to yeah, put into ahead. into perspective. You know, the business, as it was, was as I say, we were we were free flowing friends. Basically, yes. we were all friends. You know what I mean? I knew even Kabaka before we started to know that we could do music. You know what I mean? And yes. I, Abby, I grew up with Abby, so we were all friends. So the business aspect was always on the back of our minds, really and truly, because we were all from a, a learned perspective. Yes. Now, that is not something that you could say for all rest of our community, um, especially back in the past. But most of the youths within this community of this time were very learned and they were very yes. intelligent. And you understand? So understood. And then me, you know, I played a very, um, I would say, a very integral role in the first part because I tried to learn a lot about publishing and copyright okay. and all that stuff so when everybody started to make the music and it started to be recognized and go out that's when i, I basically started to sign up people like chronics to bmi uh, basically everyone I, I signed up everyone in the movement made sure they had proper you know representation of their copyright and stuff like that you know what i mean give so thanks, this the, even though i said that we were free-flowing we still because of our our level of literacy were able to have a handle on on that side and then on, yes. and then also we saw that there was a massive corruption within the music industry which is why we even did it the way we did it together in our local studio and we think and and that forced us again to use people around us to become the people that would represent our music like you know chronic instead of bands and kiki and shades yeah. the man you know yes. me yeah you kimi my manager you know what I'm yes. no yes. The Empress Sativa's husband, you know, Chris is her manager, you know, yes, yes, yes. so this was these are steps that we took consciously because no, I, I definitely we, wouldn't, you know, we would have wanted stronger representation in terms of management, in terms of people who know the business and have connections and blah blah blah. But we saw that there was a lot of you know, I mean, deep seated corruption, and we didn't want to be a part of that. You know? I, I, I definitely, you know, um, say that the item generation did the best um with with what happened but where i was going is that that bob marley wave come and gone the business wasn't taken care of and yeah, then we had another wave with garnet silk kalanji capleton you know richie Sp that whole uh revival yeah. when rastafari vibe take over again you know so what i'm saying is that this energy continues to happen in jamaica there are waves I feel a next wave is coming now. And, <laughs> and, no, for real. But but are we, yeah, man, are, we? are we going to be prepared? Is what I'm saying and and learn so that each iteration. Because I think Sizzler, them, Capleton, and all of those ones did a little better in terms of business than even yeah. the the first generation. And then the yeah, item comes take it to a next level too. You know what I mean? It's but now, this is where we are. We don't control venues. 
we don't no. control, you know, we don't have a central Rastafari publishing. I know um, 12 Tribe of Israel have a, a, a virus, but it needs strengthening too. But we don't have yeah. a central record label that we say is a Rastafari own, you know, a major label where I push out, you know. Um, music is still our biggest export. If we if we consider ourselves a nation or a people or, a, you know, our biggest export then of GDP would be uh, the creative industry, the music and the culture. Yes, what are the mechanisms that we have controlling these? This is this is what my concern is um, right now, um, because and you know you know as you talk good. about that, I was at a at a recent function up at Skyline where this was a part of the function they were talking about. You know the, the mostly the, the ganja industry. Yes. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. and, and what we can gain from that. But I, to be honest, I believe that the Rastafari community is. Is, is is approaching a lot of these things in the wrong way. This is this okay. is my opinion. Yeah. yeah so ganja is one element of what we have had you know within our midst for 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 from ever since. Yeah? yeah. But yes. it is not what defines us. You understand? And I believe that if we especially in terms of a governmental perspective, like even now that we have been given sacramental rights here in Jamaica, this gives us a legality in terms of a, a framework that we have never had because we are yes. we can now say that we are recognized as a people yeah yes. legally yeah. because of that very simple you know law so now may i say why we don't attack a, a, a perspective of we have been a people over the years that have come to bring a goodness to the world now many might not see it and many might be scared of it and whatever but in reality the history can show it that that is what we have come to do in respect of marijuana and all these things we have promoted these things yes we have used these things yes but it is now shown that for all of the the, the beatings all of the, the lives that have been destroyed in terms of g um i'm being imprisoned and, and and all these things over the years a lot of children who have been you know basically not given the right resource because their parents were just, just swept out of the way just because of a little marijuana or a little spliff or a little whatever so i'm saying why not attack the, 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 the larger governments of the world and these things with these types of issues and show that we are not just coming to say that we want um, legality with marijuana or whatever. We are showing that we are a people that have been alienated and, 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 and really downgraded and, and done all types of economic wrongs to over the years. So we deserve in this time to be not, if you don't want to say compensate us, um, you know, like big financial work right away. You have to give us the frameworks where we can actually do these things for ourselves, where we can create dispensaries and we can have these things, you understand, put in place. The government, this is a, this is a responsible, for me, this is a responsibility of all governments across the world. Because Rastafari, at, at most of its life of trading has been totally downgraded in terms of economics, in terms of a lot of things, because of ganja. And it is now one of the biggest sellers in the world. You understand? So I'm saying we are advocating to the ganja laws and these things. Yeah, but we need to advocate to higher courts. We need to, to advocate for higher things, like a reparation of, of, of what we have been through as a people, instead of trying to just get some, some little laws passed so we can have this over this side. You understand? That is my view. And, and I believe that is how we are being blocked, because we are not together as a people. We can have, a, a, like you would, you would have a, 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 a thing set out, and you say, all right, we have three people from this side of the world, that side of the world, and we are Rastafari, and we are representing all the mansions of Rastafari within the Caribbean, within all diasporas, and this is our plea right now, or this is our case, and we are going to get a lawyer to be with this for us. This is, to, for me, this is what is lacking. This is what is lacking. So we have different voices, we have different fronts coming from different areas, but we don't have a central thing to really go at, you know what I mean? I, I have good news. I have good news for the eye, and I come with good cheer because what the eye is saying is happening in real life. Um, I have some information to share with the eye, and we need Sorry. the eye strength too because um, there is an all mansion um, effort that is going on around the sacramental ganja. There's actually a rally coming up, and um, you know there is a plan being put together how to attack this thing properly. And we need the, the strength of the 12 tribe of Israel. I've been in touch with Brother Sangi, but we need young energy. 
So I'm going to reason with the offline um, yes, about um, this. But what they are saying is actually happening in, in real life. So I'm give thanks real that time. the pipeline is there, you know? Um, yes, because the family is coming together, but it needs more strength. And no, this is lead us to the topic of, the, of this conversation, which is what is the role of the singers and the players of instruments, you know? Nice. But the Almighty has manifested himself in physical form and was born as Lich to Farai Makonen. Through hard work and diligence, he attained the title of the Chasmach. When he fought in many wars and was crowned as Ras. By the will of the people, he was given the title of Negus. And by destiny, Nobus and Agas, the King of Kings. I and I are his children. What day we can go do when Marco see? Take a long journey across the ocean way. One day we'll do things fast or far away. One day we all will give your thanks and praise. One day we all go do when Marco see? Take a long journey across the ocean way. One day we'll do things fast or far away. One day we gonna free our mental slave. One day we are go live better Be that this in Asia I speech and overstand every letter One day we are go live well Spread that this in Asia I teach and trap the wicked of the hell Escape Vatican spell Escape the grave I and I are the slave that rebel Safe in a Zion we will dwell I see kindness in Asia I face while trading as in angel One day we are go do where Marco say Take a long journey across the ocean way One day we'll do things fast or far away One day we all will give your thanks and praise One day we all go do where Marco say Take a long journey across the ocean way One day we'll do things fast or far away One day we're gonna free our mental slave